Hi, I'm Evan Joseph from Evan Joseph Curls on Instagram. I'm gonna show you how to create high definition color on natural textured hair using Kenra Professional. First, I'm gonna clip from ear to ear. You don't wanna disturb the natural texture too much, so just loosely clip that forward and out of the way. When you're sectioning naturally curly hair, you don't need perfectly straight sections because we wanna maintain that texture. That's the whole point in coloring hair in its natural texture so that you can take the curl pattern into consideration. So ear to ear, starting in the back, take a horizontal section. You wanna take a large enough section that you can see large curl groupings. You don't wanna take really fine sections unless you're trying to get her super blonde. All right, now it's time to start painting her curls. We're using two colors today. That's what creates the high definition color. We're using 5B and 7B equal parts with demi permanent color. The other color that we're using is the clay lightener. That's from Simply Blonde. We mix that with 30 volume. Remember, the clay is a little slower, so you can up your developer. I'm gonna start close to the middle here. As you can see here, she's a little finer here, and I want a nice, thicker curl to paint here. So I'm gonna pull this out, give it some tension, pick up my paintbrush, get a little lightener on the end, start in the middle of the section and start to kind of move back and forth, moving up towards the root and then sliding down towards the end. Grab a paddle. It depends on where you want your saturation point to be. If you want a feathered root a little softer than you would do heavy saturation here, for high definition, you're gonna go closer to the root. So I'm gonna go ahead and press that in close to the root. I still leave about a quarter of an inch of feather at the root just because I like soft. I don't like big globs of color at the root. Use plenty of color when you're working on a chunky curl like this. That's one thing I like about the Kenner family of lighteners is they all saturate the hair really well, including the clay. Because what we don't wanna have is a curl that doesn't have lightener in the middle because you're not gonna get even lift. So saturate that really well, let that fall down. The clay lightener is going to create a shell on the hair. So we don't need to put any film or cover it up. I do use film sometimes when I need more lift, but her hair is light enough, we don't need that. We don't need any more heat coming on the hair. So I'm gonna paint all of the light sections first. And then I'm gonna go in between and put in the low light. I used to just do surface painting on naturally curly hair and it was really beautiful, but I started doing this technique because I wanted more definition. I wanted to see a real difference in between those curls and that's what this can create for you. Really saturate them. Now, don't get too detail oriented on the back of the neck here. As you get into the part of the hair where it's thicker and there's more hair, it will be easier to kind of pick up those chunks of curls. Right now, some of this finer hair around the hairline that has a tendency to be a little frizzier, that hair, um, we're just gonna kind of imagine what it'll look like defined. And you'll see that when I go and pick out the low lights. It might not look like just a single curl, but it will be once we go in and wash and style her again. We're gonna move on to our other balayage paddle and our low light. I use two different paddles and two different brushes so we're not mixing things together. Starting back in the middle. You don't have to be so cautious about getting the low light because we're just saturating. All right, our first section's done. We're just gonna keep moving up the head. 
And I'm really excited to share with you guys, once I get above the ear, I'm gonna show you a trick that will make things go a little faster and will also help everything lift really evenly so you don't have to rinse the back out. Again, see, my sections aren't perfect. I am gonna look right here. See where that's a little off? That is something I wanna check out. So I'm gonna look and see, okay, do we have anything living under there? Yeah, we have some curls there, so I'm gonna put that up into the section. When you move on to your next section, I will alternate, or if you guys remember from beauty school or anyone who's doing perms, this is not a perm, um, you will bricklay, right? So I'll also bricklay my highlights and lowlights. So if I started with a highlight here, I'm gonna be cognizant of the fact that when I get up here, that I wanna start with a low light above that and work my way out. Now, you don't have to be like crazy about it. If you miss one or something, it's not a problem, but it is something to keep in mind and will make more balance in your hair color. So let's start with a low light because we're over a highlight here, working that up to the root. Because we're working with a color, we mixed 5B and 7B together with Demi Developer. Because we are working with something close to her natural color, we don't have to worry so much about getting that root fully saturated. That'll make a great grow out for her too. Because just a little bit of her natural color is just hanging out there at the root. When you're working on curly hair, come up with a plan to begin with. So think about your sectioning, think about what percentage of the hair you want to be blonde, what percentage of the hair you want to be dark. This is a conversation that I always have with myself and the client, but really in the planning process at the beginning of her service, these are things that you really wanna think about because you wanna move through the hair quickly and confidently. Curly girls have sat in the chairs of people who are a little intimidated by their texture. And those are the things that will really set you up for like psychological success, I say. You know, you might be able to accomplish color in curly hair, but are you giving the curly client the confidence uh, so they can feel comfortable during the entire process? So you can see all of our highlights are peeking out here. Okay, so one thing, insert your paddle. A lot of people just lay that there. It doesn't really allow you to get a good saturation. So one thing I'll do if the hair is long enough is use my thumb here to hold that really nice and taut on the paddle so I can get a good saturation and get that curl to stick to the paddle. Then you're gonna release your thumb and let that slide up, saturating the ends. Really good pro tip there. See how nice and juicy that is? Flip them over, make sure the backside's covered too. So one quick little tip here. Once you get to a section where you're about a quarter of an inch above the ear, you can start to take radial sections around the head. This will stop you from having to rinse the back out and make all this hair process at the same time everything above the occipital bone will process together. So then you don't have two different like environments to deal with toners and you're not rinsing the back out. And we'll just do that on both sides of the head. Again, curly hair sections don't have to be perfect. Uh, if I would have taken that straight across, that would have been too thin of a section to paint. Okay, so starting back in the middle, we're gonna start with a highlight. Another thing is, is a slapping motion is really helpful. See that? You don't wanna wipe the color off of the hair. So I flip my brush over at the end there because I've pushed all that product to the other side of my brush and I wanna make sure that the end is fully saturated. So this is a finer section, so we're not gonna get so much color on the brush, okay? You don't want a big glob of color there because you can see through the hair, it's translucent there. 
so you don't have to start in the middle. So if you're new to this, just start with your first curl in the temple, dryer brush, and start where you would want to end so that you can plan that out. So that's a great beginner tip because I think sometimes people will end with a low light in the front and they might be discouraged. Don't let that discourage you though. These, are, these techniques are pretty simple and, and you really can't mess them up. It took me years uh, to perfect this and so give yourself a little time. So I'm cruising along here, I've got my rhythm going. I'm gonna keep working until I get to the top and then I'm gonna show you guys how I manage the placement of the highlights in the top and around the face and then we'll be all done, we'll let her process. So we've reached the top here, yay! <laughs> The top section here is really important because that's really the only section on dense curly hair that you can see the root. So really think about how you place these. This, we're gonna place the same way that we place the rest of it. These sections are a little easier because I added a lot of layers to her hair so they're not quite as long. And then, you might see she has a little blonde on her ends there, so I'm just gonna softly touch that. I don't wanna saturate that. So a lot of times people will ask me, you know, why aren't you putting anything between your sections? You know, is your color touching? Yes, obviously it's touching. When I'm working with Kendra Color, it does lay on top of each other, but it doesn't mush together too much. I like a bit of a meld with my color. You know, this hair is not gonna be perfectly straight and smoothed out. This is a technique that is meant for curly hair and for people who wear their hair curly all the time. So this is technically the last section, but because her hair is offset, there will be one extra section on the heavier side. So I never like a dark spot here in the crown, so I'm gonna start my first highlight right here in the crown. And then that's gonna be the basis or the starting point for all the other highlights and lowlights along her part. The highlights, if we're starting with our highlight, that's really going to determine the rest of our placement of our lowlights, right? So if your lowlights are the most important, then you're gonna start your, with your low lights. If your highlights are the most important, then you're gonna start with your highlights. Because once your highlights are laid out, that tells you where your low lights are, or vice versa. Once your low lights are laid out, that's gonna dictate where your highlight is. Once you do this a while though, your eye will just kind of be trained to just pick up the pieces and, and know where you're going. But if for some reason you're not able to do that, just plan ahead. All right, we're gonna put the low lights in. Those have already been placed by where we put our highlights. And even on this, I'm gonna feather at the root a bit because I don't wanna go in and smash those highlights that I put in. We're all done painting. We're gonna let her process for about 35 to 45 minutes, sometimes longer. Let these process a little longer than you normally would with a regular like foil highlight. You're highlighting very dense sections of hair and you wanna make sure that lifts up to a seven or an eight if you wanna have more toning options. Obviously, if your goal is to be around a five or a six, that's fine, but I want it to have more pop. Um, so yeah, we're gonna let her process and then we'll show you the final results. So here are our final results after 
toning and styling, beautiful high definition color on naturally curly hair. We hope you like it. And if you do, like and subscribe below for more tutorials. Thanks, see you next time.